Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron and we are on the first floor of the mortuary and talk to a zombie worker. This doddering corpse has had its eyes soon shut as well as its mouth and the number 732 is carved into its brow. The thread work that keeps its ocular cavity sealed looks extremely old. You wonder if the eyes were soon shut before or after the man's dead, death. You notice he is carrying a huge tome in his hands, as if taking it somewhere. Uh, we take the tome from his hands carefully. You carefully take the tome from the corpse's hands. It doesn't seem to notice. The tome appears to be a book of enchantments and wards. It is filled with diagrams and charts detailing various aspects of the necromantic arts. The book itself is extremely heavy, as awkward as the zombie is, it must be extremely strong. Uh, examine the corpse again. Sorry about taking that book from you. It just looked too interesting to pass up. The corpse continues to stare at you. We have the Tome of Bone and Ash. <coughs> this worn leather bound tome lists diagrams and charts detailing several mana wards and enchantments. There are numerous drawings of skeletons, bones, and the manner by which they may be preserved over time. One particular of particular interest is the section regarding guardians. Apparently the dust mean animated corpses of fallen giants to serve as guardians for the mortuary. To make them even deadlier, armoring enchantments were woven into their breastplates to help shield them from attacks. The book is too is much too complex for you to absorb all at once, but it looks as if you could refer to certain sections when the need arises. So okay, uh, let's all move right. on then. Another rusty blood covered its slab. There's another zombie worker here. You see a male corpse with a number 331 chiseled into his skull. His eyes and lips are stitched closed, and there is a gaping hole torn in his throat. He smells foul. So, seen any anything interesting going on? The corpse stares ahead silently with sightless eyes. Okay, not much to get here. Let's Done. move on then. No, let's not I'm talk gone. to him. Leave me in peace. Done. All right. All right. The problem is, um, I don't really know. You need a certain dexterity if you want to kill them quickly. I don't have All right. that. Of course, you could be disguised, uh, and then they would leave you in peace. Uh, there are two ways to be disguised. You could be disguised as a, zo as a zombie, we had that, and I uh, scrapped that because I don't want to walk around so slowly. Or you could wear the robes of a dustman and be disguised. I'm gone. But to wear the robes of a dustman you actually need um, to kill one. And to kill one you need a high dexterity. See my dilemma? I I would think that there should be a way to Done. deal with them in a non-violent way, but apparently there is not. Or at least I'm not able to do it. All right. right now. But I used all my dialogue options, so whatever. What is that here? Great hall. There's a door. I need a key. There's Suego. Leave him to his thoughts. Uh, it's safe before we do anything. I'm gone. Leave me in peace. Oh, they're still All following. Right. This can't be good. Um. Done. Let's talk to Suego. You see a tired looking man in a black robe. His narrow face is extremely pale and he doesn't look as if he has been sleeping. His shoulders are slumped and the flesh sacks loosely beneath his bloodshot eyes. He looks so lost in thought he doesn't even notice you. Greetings. Updated my journal. The man turns to face you and makes a slight bow. You suddenly notice that his eyes aren't bloodshot so much as they have a red tinge to them. I'm Suego, how may I? He suddenly seems to notice your scars and the corner of his mouth twitches. I'm sorry, sir. Are you lost? No, I'm not lost. I had some questions. 
I do not recall admitting you. Seigo looks at you suspiciously and his eyes gleam red in the light of the torches. May I ask what you are doing here? Um, Leah, let's see what happens here. I walk on one of the slabs in your preparation room. He seems surprised. You woke up on one of the slabs upstairs? Yes. It's hard to believe, but it is the truth. I woke up on one of your slabs upstairs. Really? The dustman criticizes you. You do look like you've been prepared. I don't know how you would have survived such pain. Are you in pain? You look it. Um, how would I have gotten here in the first place? Well, Suego squints. He seems confused. Obviously a mistake has been made. Either we were, you were brought here by blood relatives, other dustmen, or... So Ego suddenly hisses, as if an unpleasant thought had just occurred to him, or one of the collectors. Collectors? Yes, collectors. Packs of scavengers that bring the bodies of the dead to us. They may have brought you dead. They may have thought you dead. So Ego hisses and his eyes gleam. And they are so copper blind they wouldn't have cared to check before delivering you here. So Ego studies you. It is fortunate you awoke. You may have reached the true death before your time. Or you may have reached the true death before your time. There's been a mistake and I'd like to leave now. Suego nods and the corner of his mouth twitches. Why, of course, of course, let me open the front gate for you. I All feel right. stronger. And he opens the door. So, the truth actually helped us here. Very well, the front gate is now unlocked, but you cannot re-enter. Can I ask you some questions before I leave? Suego nods. If I may ask, are you alright? You look tired. Suego manages a weak smile and the corner of his mouth twitch slightly. I have recently taken ill. Minor fever is nothing more. Sometimes they make sleep difficult. Anything I could do? Suego shakes his head. No, no, thank you for your concern. I will endure. He frowns slightly. Was there something else you wanted? Yes. Do you know someone named Farrod? Farrod? Of course I know him. He frowns. His eyes gleam red. A ghoulish man. No respect for the dead and even less for the living. He's a scavenger. A collector. Do you know where I could find him? I know he resides in the hive, the slum outside the mortuary, but I do not know exactly where. Some of the other collectors may know if they talk to you. Um, collectors make their living gathering corpses and bringing them here to the mortuary. When they, we then make sure the bodies receive a proper burial. So if a collector found a body, mine for example, they might have brought it here and sold it to you. Yes. Yeah, okay. We already had that. Um, I'm missing a journal. Have you seen one? A journal? So he seems confused. No, I have not seen one. Uh, thanks anyway. Farewell. Um, let's leave. I'm gone. So, Done. move up here. Can we save? Cannot save, apparently. Probably because these guys are I'm still gone. following us. I'm gone. Doesn't matter. What do we have here? Why don't I get a message? You see a strikingly beautiful ghostly form before you. Her arms are crossed and her eyes are closed. She has long flowing hair and her gown seems stirred by some ethereal breeze. As you watch, she stirs side slightly and her eyes flicker. Greetings? You! What is it that brings you here? Have you come to see firsthand the misery you have wrought? Perhaps in death I still hold some shred of use for you, my love. Her eyes slowly open and she blinks in confusion for a moment, as if uncertain where she is. She looks around slowly, then sees you. Her tranquil face suddenly twists into a snarl. We already had that? 
My love, do I know you? The spirit makes a begging motion with her hands. How can it be that the thieves of the mind continue to steal my name from your memory? Do you not remember me, my love? The ghost stretches out her arms. Think! Her voice becomes desperate again. The name Di Dionara must evoke some memory with you. I think I feel the stirrings of my memory. Tell me more. Perhaps your words shall chase the shadows away from my mind. Oh, at last the fates show mercy. Even death cannot chase me from your mind, my love. Do you not see? Your memories shall return. Tell me how I can help you, and I shall. Do you know who I am? You are one both blessed and cursed, my love. And you are one who is never far from my thoughts and heart. Blessed and cursed? What do you mean? The nature of your curse should be apparent, my love. Look at you, she points at you. Death rejects you. Your memories have abandoned you. Do you not pause and wonder why? I'm still trying to get my bearings, actually. What else can you tell me about myself? I know that you once claimed that you once claimed you loved me, and that you would love me until death claimed us both. I believe that, never knowing the truth of who you were, what you were, and what am I? You, I, cannot. She suddenly freezes, and she speaks slowly, carefully, as if her voice frightens her. The truth is this. You are one who dies many deaths. These deaths have given the knowing of all things mortal, and in your hand lies the spark of life and death. Those that die near you carry a trace of themselves that you can bring forth. As Dayonara speaks the words, a crawling sensation wells up in the back of your skull. You suddenly feel compelled to look at your hand. As you lift it up and look at it, you can see the blood cursing sluggishly through, it, sluggishly through your arm, pouring into your muscles and in turn giving strength to your bones. Well, Updated my journal. And you know Dionara is right. You suddenly remember how to coax the dimmest spark of life from a body and bring it forth. The thought both horrifies you and intrigues you. You have remembered how to raise others from the dead. To access this ability, select the special abilities button in the quick menu. You can only use this on party members that have died in your presence. It will not work on anyone who does not travel with you, and it will not work on party members you remove from the party while they are dead. I... I... I had other questions. Who are you? Oh, we already had that. Thank you. Can you tell me where I am? Where are you? Why, you are here with me, my love. As in the times when life was something both of us shared, now it is the eternal boundary that separates us. Eternal boundary? Dianara sounds saddened. It is a barrier I fear you shall never cross, my love. It is the barrier between your life and what remains of mine. I see. I need to escape this place. Can you help me? As you are about to ask Diana the question it catches in your throat, it occurs to you that if you tell her you are looking for an escape route, she may feel you are abandoning her. Uh, her. If you are going to ask her how to leave, you will need to be delicate about it. Dionara, I am in danger. Can you guide me to a place of safety? I shall return as soon as I can, as soon as I can to speak to you again. In danger? Dionara looks concerned. Of course, my love. I will aid you any way I can. She closes her eyes for a moment and you watch an ethereal sapphire pass through her body, stinging her, stirring her hair. After a moment the sapphire dies and her eyes slowly open. Perhaps there is a way. Yes? I sense that this place holds many doors shrouded from mortal eyes. Perhaps you could use one of these portals as a means of escape. Portals? Holes are holes in existence, leading to destinations in the inner and outer planes. If you could find a proper key, you could escape through one of them. Key? Dionara pauses for a moment as if attempting to remember. 
Portals will reveal themselves when you have the proper key. Unfortunately, these keys can be almost anything. An emotion, a piece of wood, a dagger of silvered glass, a scrap of cloth, a tune you hum to yourself. I fear that the dustmen are the only ones who would know the keys you could use to leave the halls, my love. Then I shall ask one of them farewell, Dayonara. Hold a moment. I learned much when I traveled with you, my love, and, I, you have lo and what you have lost I have retained. I have not divul divulged all that I know to you. My sight is clear, whilst you fumble in the darkness for a spark of thought. And what is it your sight sees that I do not? Time itself relaxes its hold as the chill of oblivion slowly claims us, my love. Glimpses of things yet to come swarm across my vision. I see you, my love. I see you as you are now, and Dianara grows quiet. What is it? What do you see? I see what lies ahead for you. It ripples through the plains, stemming outward from this point. Shall I speak of what I see? Yes, please tell me. First I require a promise. Promise you will return. That you will find some means to save me or join me. Okay, let's make a vow here. I swear I will find some means to save you or join you. This is what my eyes see, my love. Unfettered by the shackles of time. Wait for her to continue. You shall meet enemies three, but none more dangerous than yourself in your full glory. They are shades of evil, of good, and of neutrality, given life and twisted by the laws of the plains. You shall come to a prison built of regrets and sorrow, where the shadows themselves have gone mad. There you will be asked to make a terrible sacrifice, my love. For the matter to be laid to rest, you must destroy that which keeps you alive. And be immortal no longer. Destroy what keeps me alive? I know that you must die while you still can. The circle must come to a close, my love. You are not meant for this life. You must find that which was taken from you and travel beyond into the lands of the dead. Die while I still can? Updated my journal. I do not doubt your ability to rise from the dead. I do believe that every incarnation weakens your thoughts and memories. You claim you have lost your memory. Perhaps it is a side effect of countless deaths? If so, what more will you lose in successive deaths? If you lose your mind, you will not even know enough to realize that you cannot die. You shall be truly doomed. Well, not as long as I am playing the game, because I do remember. Countless deaths? How long has this been going on? I do not truly know, except that it has gone on long enough. Alright, farewell, Dayonara. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. She smiles, but there is only sadness in it. She closes her eyes and with an ethereal whisper she fades. You back with me, Chief? You kind of drifted out of me there. No, I'm fine. Do you know who that spirit was? Eh, spirit? That spectre I was talking to, the woman. You were rattling your bone box with some woman? Where? Morty looks around excited. What did she look like? She was right on top of the beer. Didn't you see her? Uh, no. You just kind of drifted out for a bit there. Just stood there statue-like. I was a little worried you'd gone addled on me again. No, I'm fine, I think. Let's move on. Ooh, looks like my skills have increased. Yeah, well... Move out? Uh, why can't we save? Probably because those guys are still hunting us. Let's check the journal. Uh, I met a dustman named Suego at the mortuary front gate. He looks tired as if he hasn't slept in weeks. Judging from the eyes and pallor of his skin, it looks like he has caught some sort of illness. I don't know whether to be horrified or impressed when I spoke to Dayonara 
in the vaults of the mortuary, she told me that my deaths had given me some control over life and death. If I see a body, I can see the faint traces of life in it and coax it forth. For some reason it will only work on people who travel with me, and only if they die in my presence. Why? I'm tra In traveling with me, do they become linked to me somehow? I encountered the ghost of a woman named Dionara, who prophesied that I would meet three enemies, but no more dangerous than myself in my full glory. They are shades of evil, of good and of neutrality, given life and twisted by the laws of the plane. She said that I would come to a prison built of regrets and sorrow, where the mad shadows themselves have gone mad, no, where the shadows themselves have gone mad. Here I will be asked to make a terrible sacrifice. For the matter to be laid to rest, I must destroy that which keeps me alive and be immortal no longer. The ghostly apparition Dionara claims she knows you and that you are her love. Whatever keeps her on the physical plane must be powerful indeed for her to stave off death so long. Dying does not seem to have improved her disposition. Okay, moving on. Here we have our portal. I'm gone. All right. Um, what else do we have? I'm so gone. We can't save. Can we talk to you? This reanimated male corpse has the number 1041 carved into its forehead. Despite its taunt, desiccated flesh, it is apparent that its features once had a rather exotic cast to them. The zombie's lips have been stitched closed, most likely to prevent it from moaning incessantly. And it smells of s s and it smells strongly of formaldehyde. Ah, oh, it doesn't say anything. Leave the corpse in peace. Did we talk to you? This woman's corpse pauses in its trudging about as you approach. You notice the number 114 is carved into her forehead. Her mouth has been soon shut, but the threading is slowly coming loose and faint moans issue from her lips. Okay, doesn't say anything. Here we have this dustman again. No, oh, what would you attack here? Oh, the brute! I hit A. Didn't want to do that. All right. Be quickly. All right. No, leave me in peace. I'm gone. What is that here? This is a heavy barred gate of rusted steel. There doesn't appear to be any way of opening it. I think we already had that. Let's see whether we can climb up the stairs. And save here. Here we can save. Okay. We have enough experience to level. The, um, na the nameless one has 23 hit points now. He got 10 out of it, this is okay. Saving throws have improved, 10 hit points gained, fighting skills have improved. I accept that. And I probably get to spend a point. Yes. Um, what do we do? Um, we could try and raise dexterity, but I'd much rather increase wisdom some more. Okay. You save again and we do the same for Morty. He has 20 hit points right now. He got 8. Plus 2 from constitution bonus. That's okay, I think. We accept this. And we go down again. 
There is still that space in the middle here that we didn't explore yet. It's a giant skeleton. Before you is a giant skeleton in ornate bronze armor. The armor has been bolted onto the skeleton's frame and a series of elaborate symbols have been carved across the breastplate. You wonder where the skeleton came from. You weren't aware they made humans in this size. The huge blade in its hands looks like it weighs as much as a wagon cart. Hey, how about this skeleton, Morty? Will it do as a buddy? Morty grins. Uh, is that a yes, or...? Oh, sorry. Morty floats up to the head of the skeleton, stares at it, then floats back down, studying the armor and the blade as he descends. Oh, yes, 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 I think this will do. I think we just we better just leave it alone. Then what in Bartow did you ask me if I wanted it then? If I wanted why then what in Bartow did you ask me if I wanted it for then? Practicing your cruelty skills? Morty bobs indignant indignantly. And after all I've done for you. Hmm. I was thinking of your safety, Morty. I am worried detaching your head to this thing would hurt you somehow. Morty stares at you for a moment. What? Did we get married at some point? What's all this? I don't want you to get hurt, Wash. Morty glares at you. If you really cared, you'd find a way to get my head on that giant skeleton's body. Alright then, give me a second to pry the head off this thing. As you are about to do so, you suddenly stop and your eyes are drawn to the skeleton's armor. Something about the symbols engraved on its breastplate makes you pause. If these skeletons are guardians, then disturbing them may awaken them. Examine the skeleton carefully. Uh, wait. Uh, the skeleton's intricate bronze armor is riveted onto its ribcage and shoulder blades with a series of iron bolts. As you study the frame behind the armor, you notice the same iron belts are set into the skeleton's shoulders, elbow, pelvic and knee, knee joints. A mass of thick leather cords and heavy knotted ropes run along the length of the skeleton arms and legs, woven in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. Let's examine the armor. Despite the armor's obvious age, it looks well cared for. It shines brightly and the symbols engraved on the breastplate seem to flow in the firelight, shifting slightly whenever you try to focus on them. Study the symbols. Almost unconsciously you let your gaze relax as you look at the symbols. After a moment the symbols cease shifting and resolve into a trail of runes that run up and down the breastplate. Strangely enough, the interlocking pattern of runes reminds you of chains. And with that thought you suddenly recall that these runes are some sort of warding enchantment. Uh, let's study the runes and try and recall the enchantment. You study the pattern of runes as they weave their way across the breastplate. On its most basic level, the runes are a lesser armoring enchantment, but several skull-shaped runes and spherical traces along the edges of the armor make you suspect several greater necromantic and warding enchantments are woven in as well. Touching the skeleton will most likely cause it to awaken and defend itself. See if you can dispel the enchantment somehow. Okay, 500 experience points. You suspect that marring the rune pattern along the breastplate could unravel the enchantment, but it looks difficult. The pattern is complicated and scratching out the wrong portion could cause the skeleton to animate. We now could use the, the tome of bone and ash, ash to see how to deal with that. Or since our nameless one is quite intelligent, we could figure it out on our own. So we mar the runes, maintaining the warding enchantment first, then work backward through the rune pattern, cancelling the necromantic and then the armoring enchantment. So if your nameless one is a little stupid, you use the Book of Bone and Ash and it works too. You may get some less experience out of that. The work is difficult and nerve-wracking at first, but slowly your mind begins to focus and the runes begin to unravel beneath your attack. Within minutes, the giant skeleton has been stripped of the enchantments binding it. It collapses, falling to the floor with a crash of bones and heavy clanging noise. Damn pile of bones. 800 XP. 
You wait for a moment, but no one responds to the sound. Moving quickly, you sift through the skeleton parts on the floor. Most of it is too heavy to hold or be useful, but you discover a piece of skelet the skeleton's breastplate with the majority of the broken enchantments engraved on it. You have a feeling that it could prove useful. I'll just take it then. And we got... The Rune of Lesser Warding invokes armor, can only be used by a wizard. Upon close examination of the runes covering the surface of this breastplate, you think you might be able to unlock the rune's power and use it to invoke a primitive warding enchantment, similar to the one that protected the giant skeleton. Activate the rune will destroy the breastplate, however. Not a big game. Let's give it to Morty. That worked nicely. All right. What else do we have? I'm gone. Done. Hey, what's that? Oh, there's another skeleton. Uh, okay, again. See if you can dispel the enchantments. We know how to deal it with it now. The warding enchantment close. And boom! 800 more experience points. And a rune of armor. Again. What's here? Crescent hatchet. Oh, 2 to 7. Oh, but speed of 10, tackle minus 1. It's an axe. This huge hatchet has a crescent shaped head. Although an imitating weapon, it looks more decorative than functional. Not only is it extremely heavy, but the balance is poor and the edge is dull and pitted. Despite the difficulty in using the hatchet in combat, the long hand allows the wielder to put considerable floor force into the swing. Ah oh well. So, what else do we have? No, you're not talking um, to me. Leave me in peace. Do we I'm have gone. any other skeletons here? Yes, we do. Let's dispel that shit. Shield. Okay. How come your your lost XP uh, hit points? That's weird. And another shield. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh well, whatever. So, well, I guess that's it, right? Um, we could probably leave now. We could leave through the front door or I'm through gone. the portal. Done. Let's say we go through the portal. You leave me in peace. Where was the portal? Okay, let's leave through the portal. Maybe not. What do we have here? Money and a note. This sarcophagus appears to have been here for centuries. There is no lid. The exterior seems to be made of solid stone. Pen's note. This note has been written with remarkable penmanship upon the finest parchment. Vexus. If you are reading this, you have undoubtedly failed in your task and have been forced to use the escape route I arranged. I told you that your little disguise idea was ridiculous. In any case, you'll need to lay low for a while. The dustmen may be deluded, but they are not fools, and they will certainly seek retribution for our intrusion. I have left some coins. Use them to secure a hiding place in the hive, prefer preferably in Ragpicker Square. The dustman will be un unwilling to look for you there. Once you have secured a new hiding place, I have a new mission for you.
Find out where Farrod is getting those bodies he's delivering to the mortuary. It's apparently causing the dustman a great deal of upset and, and I wouldn't mind knowing myself. Reports are that the stone-faced dustman at the gathering dust bar, Initiate Amoric, I think the fool's name is, has been sending out finders to try and mark Farrod's movement. See if you can find out how far along he is and hinder his efforts until we know more about Farrod's activities. I don't want Amoric finding out something before we do. Pen. Okay, so how about we deal with this whole situation in the next video? So, thank you very much for watching. And see you soon. Bye.